Welcome to another tutorial video. This one is going to be all about Excel and specifically whether or not VBA is useful for Excel as it's used in investment banking. You're also going to get a chance to record and practice with your first VBA macro. So lately we've been getting a lot of questions on this topic and related topics like programming languages. Specifically, we tend to get questions such as, do I really need to know VBA and macros? How useful are they for traditional investment banking roles? And then what about R, Python, and other programming languages like those? How much time should I spend learning these before my internship or full-time job begins? So as usual, I'm gonna give you the short answer and then we're going to go into a more extended explanation and example. The short answer is that yes, it does help to be familiar with VBA and macros, even for traditional corporate finance, private equity, investment banking roles, where you're doing pretty basic things in Excel, you don't need to be an expert and you don't need to have super advanced knowledge, but knowing the basics can really save you a lot of time. You're not going to be tested on these topics in interviews or case studies, but they can make your on the job life much easier because you can automate a lot of repetitive tasks without too much effort. Other programming languages like R and Python are not really useful for the roles that we focus on, investment banking, private equity, corporate development, equity research. They're more for trading, portfolio management, or jobs that actually use real statistics like quant research or working at a quant fund or something like that. But they're not super useful if you are working on deals and advising companies on raising capital, for example. If you spend about two months learning and practicing with Excel before you start, it might be worth taking a week or so to learn some VBA. So maybe 10 to 15% or so of your time, 10 to 20% of your time on it. Think of it as an added bonus or icing on the cake. It's good to know, but it's not absolutely essential. Let's go into the next part now and talk about how to learn VBA syntax. And then we'll go through a simple example of your first macro and how you can modify it to make it more robust. And in these examples, I will be using a real estate file. I realize this is Excel for investment banking, but I just wanted to give you a very simple example of a file that has input boxes and an area for projections and some type of very simple cash flow model or financial model below. The best way to learn VBA is to start by recording macros or sequences of actions in Excel and then reviewing and modifying that code. Most Excel constructs that you already know carry over to VBA. So you can still have if statements in VBA, you can have functions like index and match, you can have ranges of cells, you can have formatting commands. So if you already know everything in Excel, then you should be able to translate that knowledge to VBA. It's just that you sometimes write the commands a bit differently and the syntax and the inputs are a bit different. The other difference is that you can do more with these constructs. For example, you can loop through a range of cells and then apply a specific operation to each one instead of you having to go through manually and do the same thing. Also, you can save data for use in other functions or you can even save it directly on the spreadsheet by overwriting or writing in certain cells. Think of VBA as a way to automate your work and save time. Don't think of it as learning a brand new language because that sounds very intimidating. Think of it as really a way to boost your efficiency and to automate some tasks that you would have to do manually otherwise. So for your first macro, we are going to start by creating a set of steps to form an input box in Excel. This is because it's very simple. It shows the basic steps and it shows how you can get a lot of value out of VBA without necessarily being an expert or having super advanced knowledge. Creating an input box doesn't require tons of logic or error checking, but it is actually annoying and repetitive without a macro to do it. And just to establish what we're talking about here, the input boxes are the yellow boxes that you see right here for things like the building name, the locations, the months and the year, the acquisition date, the acquisition price, things like that. You can see that they're missing in a bunch of spots. For example, we should have yellow input boxes right here, and we should have them for this entire area right here, but we do not right now. The reason why it's a bit annoying is because to create these, you have to change the borders, the fill color and the font color and the alignment if you wanna do that. And there's no way to do all that at once in a single keystroke. It's even more annoying in Mac Excel because Mac Excel lacks a lot of the shortcuts in the PC version. So for example here, if I want to do all this, first I have to change the fill color. I'll go to Alt six on my setup and change it to yellow. And then I have to change the alignment, which is Alt five on my setup. And then I have to change the 
borders and for this one I can go to control one and then go to border and then change the color from right here and change it to this gray, either a lighter gray or a darker gray and say outline right there. And now we have that. Now that doesn't seem like it's too bad to set it up like that. But if you think about it, we actually went through quite a few steps. And if you have to do this everywhere, it's going to get very annoying. Also, we get consistency issues. For example, if you're looking closely, you can tell that the border colors are not exactly the same color of gray here. So I should really just do copy and paste formats here to fix this. And the final thing I want to mention is that I just did a copy and paste special for formats, but you can't generally apply that because if you do that, you're also going to copy the number formats, which you don't want to do. For example, let's say I have this bright idea of taking the 76 right here and then going over to these percentages and just doing copy and paste formats. Well, I can do that. But now we get the incorrect format for the percentage here. So yes, we have an input box, but it is not what we want to do. And now we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to find the format for the percentage under number and custom number formats and change something from there. So the bottom line is that there is not a good, simple way to copy and paste only the fill color, the font color, and the borders and alignment here without also getting the number formats and other parts of this. So we can create a macro to do this by recording completion of these actions in Excel and then tweaking the code a bit. Let's go in and let's actually do this. Now, the first thing to note is that you will need to have the developer toolbar here. If you don't have this, then you need to go to the options menu in Excel, which is alt T O or command comma on the Mac, and then go to customize ribbon and go to developer right here and make sure developer is checked. So in the options menu, customize ribbon and then go to developer and make sure it's checked. If it is, then you can just go here and then you can go to record macro. We can call this macro input box. I'll use an underscore in between and we can assign it to the key shortcut key, control shift I, I standing for input. And we'll just store the macro in the workbook for now. So I can go in and I will just go to the control one menu for this or command one on the Mac. And I will go over to alignment first and I'll change it to center aligned. Then for the font, for the color, I will not change the color here. So I'll just keep it the blue because we don't really want to be changing that. And then for the border, I will select outline. I'll actually select none first, and then I will change it to this darker gray color. I'll select outline for the border. And then for the fill, I will go in and we need to actually get this yellow color. So for now, I'm just going to select this one right here, even though that's not quite what we want. We'll get the actual colors later on. So we have all that and we are now done recording this macro. So I'll go to developer and I will go to stop recording right there. So we have this, there are obviously some problems like the color scheme being off. To fix that, we can just go to control one and then more colors and look at the red, green, blue code, the RGB code, it's 255, 255, 153. So I can go in here and I can just modify this. I can go to more colors, 255, 255, and then 153. And that fixes that. This basic macro is okay. And to illustrate how it works, let's just go into the VBA editor. So I'll go to developer, visual basic. And then I will go to module one right here. And we can see where we have recorded our code. So this is how VBA has stored this internally. Now, if you go in and try to execute this macro elsewhere, so let's say right here for parking, parking spots per unit, for example, control shift I, it works. Now the yellow color is still wrong, so we can fix that, but you can see that it works relatively well on a lot of these. And unlike the first attempt where we just copied and pasted the formats, it doesn't actually change the number formats here, which is what we want. However, there are some problems with this. First of all, there is way too much code here. We don't need to have separate width statements for everything. If you look at what this is doing, it's changing the borders in one part, and then it keeps changing the borders separately in a bunch of these other parts. And then we go down and we finally change the fill color on the inside. And it's all a little bit confusing because of the way that it's automatically stored in VBA when we create a macro like this. It's also not very readable because a lot of these commands are rather useless and it's hard to even tell what the colors are because they're stored as these sort of confusing numbers. Dot color equals 65535. So it's hard to tell at a glance what that is. And then the final problem here is that 
we should really skip empty cells to make this more efficient. If you think about it, it doesn't really make sense to apply this macro at all to empty cells. So for example, if we go back in here and let's say I select cell 09 and I press Control Shift I. Well, yes, we've applied the input box here, but it makes absolutely no sense. We would ideally like to be able to select a whole range of cells like the one here and then have Excel intelligently be able to tell what we should format as an input box and then what should just remain text or not be formatted at all because it's a blank cell. So there are a couple of problems with this. Most of these issues can be fixed with a simple reorganization of the code and then using RGB values like the 255, 255, 153 that we saw for the yellow before. It's a little more complicated to skip the empty cells and then to format input boxes with constants versus formulas differently. So let's go through this first and start by reorganizing this a little bit. And then I will show you how to fix some of these other issues. Let's go to the bottom first and think about what we actually have to do here. So for now, I will just say with selection and then I'll say end with, which means that we want to stop working on the range of cells that we have selected here. If you think about what we're doing here, it doesn't really make sense to format all of these individual borders separately. So what I will do instead is say dot borders dot line style equals, and then we have the Excel continuous right here. And we're not going to distinguish between the right edge and the bottom edge and the top edge. All that is completely unnecessary. So we're just going to say that. And then for the colors, I'm just going to say dot borders dot color equals RGB and then 178, 178, 178. This corresponds to the darker gray color, which is a whole lot more readable than negative 0.24994 or whatever this number is. And then the last thing here is it would be helpful to set the border weight. So I'll say dot borders dot weight equals XL thin. And so with that, we can actually get rid of all this unnecessary code for these borders right here. And so I've just deleted all of that. In terms of other things that are actually useful, the dot interior part here is what's responsible for the fill color. So if I say dot interior, and then I say dot pattern right after it, and I set it to XL solid, that just means that we get a solid fill color for the background. I will also keep the second part. And so I'll say dot interior dot pattern color index equals XL automatic. And then the last thing here is I will change the color as well. It's just the RGB 255, 255, 153. And you could look this up in Excel if you don't have immediate access to it, but this is just the light yellow color. And then the final thing here that's actually useful is to take this horizontal alignment part from right up here. We don't want to set the vertical alignment or the text wrapping or any of this other stuff. All we want to do is center align what we have right here. So I'll say dot horizontal alignment equals XL center and then I will delete all this other code. So now we have something that is far more efficient. If you don't believe me, let's go back into Excel and see how this works. If I now press Control Shift I, it does the same exact thing, and it also fixes the color issue that we saw before. If I try to apply it to a percentage, Control Shift I, it does the same exact thing right there. So we've now made our code a whole lot more efficient, but we still have some of those other problems here. Now I'm purposely not going to go through this in detail because we just don't have time. It would take probably 30 minutes or 40 minutes to explain everything, but I am going to copy and paste in my finished macro for this, just to illustrate the power of this and what you can really do with these tools. So I have just pasted it in here. And the basic idea with all this is that we can intersect the user selected range, whether it's a single cell or multiple cells with the used range of the spreadsheet and also the formulas or constants in the selected range. And so what we can then do is set the font colors for the formulas or constants first, and then do the borders, fill font and alignment formatting if cells actually exist meeting those criteria. So for example, right here in the beginning part where we have these intersect commands, we are just trying to find the formulas versus the constants separately. And we're intersecting it with whatever the user has selected and with the entire used range of the spreadsheet. So we're getting those formula cells and constant cells separately. And then we're saying that if we have both formula cells and constant cells, then we want to be working on a range that includes both of them. So we take the union of them and we join them together. We also set the color to blue or black as appropriate. 
And then if we have just formula cells, but no constant cells, then we set everything to black and we set our working range to those formula cells. And then if we have constant cells, but no formula cells, we set our working range to that and we set the color to blue. And then here at the end, it's basically the same code as what we had before, but the difference is I'm doing some more error checking. And for example, we wanna make sure that if our range is completely blank, then we don't activate anything. Again, I'm going over this very quickly and I'm just showing it as an example of how you can refine code in VBA once you already have it set up for something simple like this. To see the power of this, let's now go back into Excel and see how this works. So if I now select an area like this, for example, and I press Control Shift I, Excel is intelligent enough, or our code at least, is intelligent enough to know that we don't wanna format these blank areas. If I select something like the text over here, Control Shift I, because of the way that we've set this up, where we have only selected constants, constant cells that actually have numbers in them, Excel knows that we don't want to format the text here according to these input boxes. We just wanna leave it alone because this is not a numerical constant. These are not numerical constants. I can even apply the formatting here to fix some of the incorrect color coding that we had before. And so you can see how it works. If you really want to see how well this macro works, let's just go in and change the font color to white and everything. We'll remove all the borders. And then we can even go in and remove the alignments right here. And look at this. If I now select this whole area and I press Control Shift I, it doesn't quite work. It doesn't detect that this text here is actually part of an input cell. So we have to fix that part manually, but it works pretty well on the rest. It figures out what is text, what is blank, and then what's an actual input cell. And it's all because of the selection commands that we added to this. We specifically looked for cells that had formulas versus constants and treated them differently, formatted them differently, and then applied the same borders, fill color, and horizontal alignment to everything here. So this is just a simple example of the power of VBA in a situation like this. You can see I can actually pretty easily fix this problem here by just copying and pasting the formats and changing the format of the cell itself to text. So that's it for this tutorial. To summarize everything we went through, yes, VBA is useful, but you don't need to be an expert and you don't need to have super advanced knowledge to get a lot out of it. The best way to learn is to record a macro, then go to the VBA editor and review and edit the code and see what it's doing and see if you can make it more efficient like we did here. Now, I know I went through this very quickly, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of how you can use VBA in Excel for investment banking roles. We like to make simple, highly useful macros focused on automating repetitive tasks in Excel, like the input boxes, and then do some tweaking to those. Your first macro here was to create an input box in any financial model or valuation spreadsheet, which is pretty simple if you just record the actions and also highly useful. And you saw how we made it more efficient by grouping together code differently, by removing some unnecessary commands, and then how we added some bells and whistles by skipping empty cells, by formatting formulas versus constants differently, and by setting it up so that Excel can detect the difference between text labels in a spreadsheet versus actual input cells with numeric constants or formulas in them. That's it for this lesson. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about how this works. And even if you didn't understand everything I went through here completely, you can download and use this file and use this input box macro if you want yourself. Just import it into any Excel spreadsheet that you're working in, and you can use this to save a lot of time and set up your models more quickly and more effectively.